Obedient Church of God, broadcasting worldwide on the internet. I can tell by your eyes that you probably been crying forever. Yes, Father has been crying for 6,000 years because you, you are so disobedient. Stars in the sky, the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1.14. Lights will mark days, not phony averaging calendars. Reach about oh, how you broke God's heart. And if I teach you just a little bit longer, you listen to God's heart. If I stand all alone. Yes, the obedient church of God is standing all alone. It's the only congregation in the world including the Jews who don't move, we don't move, God's Sabbath day to Friday and half the world. All of your self-willed ministers, your lying sinisters, refuse to have God's Sabbath day on the seventh day and half the world. Follow it so you can be saved. It is so sad that it just goes on year after year of disobedience, of making up lies by self willed ministers who are adding practices, having you practice things that are not in the Bible. Your ministers are lying devils. Wake up! Why are you listening to them? Why don't you follow your Bible? Well, welcome to the obedient church of God who follows every jot and tittle. Bonjour, Prix France, César, le Présmédi, le Hourdou du Nia en France. 6 p.m. supper time in Paris, France. 9 a.m. on the West Coast. 12 noon on the East Coast, breakfast time, lunch time, supper time, the perfect time for your spiritual feeding today. So, if I stay here, won't you listen to God's Listen to God's Bible. Won't you follow God's Bible? You, yes, you will be sacrificed in the tribulation. Then it'll be too late for you to wake up and respond. You'll have your heads cut off. And this includes all of the offshoot five virgins of all of the associated offshoot churches of God. That includes Triumph Prophetic Ministries. That includes Living Church of God, United Church of God, Philadelphia Church of God. You all have your heads cut off because you 
are willfully disobeying God's word. You're only half full of oil. You refuse to fill up on oil. You move God's Sabbath day to Friday in Australia and in the Philippines and in, indeed in China and indeed in India and indeed around the world. You think you're going to be in the kingdom? I can tell you on the authority of the Bible, Triumph Prophetic Ministries, you will be thrown in hell because you move God's Sabbath day to Friday in half the world and you know the facts. The facts have been presented to you by this writer and by others and Romans 10, 26 states clearly that if you sin when you know the facts there is no sacrifice for your sins and you know the fact triumph prophetic ministry that the phony international dateline moved God's Sabbath to Friday in half of the world and yet you have your members associates following that lie and indeed you disfellowshipped a member for keeping God's Sabbath well off with your head that's how serious it is these self-willed ratchet mouth ministers who just go on blabbing month after month year after year not listening to any of the truth celebrating all the pagan days such as mother goddess day the mother of all the gods and goddesses you have got 364 other days to honor your mother, to call her, to give her flowers, give her presents during the year. Not on Mother Goddess Day. Wake up! And the same goes for Sky Father's Day for your dear father. You want to practice Sky Father's Day, the long, leading to the longest day of the year. You are in a satanic deception. And indeed, Turkey God Day day of Osiris and Ra that sprang forth from the cosmic goose that laid the egg. Here's what happened. The goose gave its life for its young, so it was revered by the Egyptian societies. The goose would stand up against the wolf or a coyote, and the goose would fight with the wolf and till its little goslings could all scamper away to safety in the deeper woods. The goose gave its life for its young. And you've got a turkey sitting on your table. Why don't you have a lamb sitting on your table? And indeed, the President of the United States pardons a turkey. I challenge you to repent and stop following these satanic days and don't be a liar and make it worse for yourself and saying, well, I'm not doing it because I'm doing it to Ra Osiris. I'm doing it to God. God thunders, Jeremiah 10 to do not learn the way of the Gentile. Do not learn the American Thanksgiving Day. It's pagan. It's pagan to the core. That's why the president pardons a goose on Thanksgiving Day. Why doesn't he pardon a lamb? Why a goose? Because it represents Ra Osiris the way it always has re represented Ra Osiris for the last 4,000 years. And if you say that you're not doing it to Ra Osiris, but you're going to do it on exactly the same day and exactly the same way, particularly with a turkey god on your table, you might as well have a Buddha on your table or a Christmas tree. It's exactly the same. You call yourselves ministers of God. You're ministers of the devil, Satan. And you refuse to repent. And you will be thrown in the lake of fire because there's no more sacrifice for your sins. Hebrews 10.26 states that clearly. Well, you'd better learn to obey or you're going to have your heads cut off, you self-willed lying ministers, causing others to kind of causing other sheep of God to be destroyed by your self-willed jabbering mouths? No hope for you. Is God your sovereign master? Do you follow every jot of his Bible where Deuteronomy 12.32 states clearly, do not add 
or subtract to God's Bible. Then you go to the New Testament. You preach any other gospel, such as a Cifero count, and you are an abomination to God. You are vomit material. You are vomit material if you are adding anything to God's Bible. And God will vomit you out of his mouth because you have polluted his way of life with a phony Sephirot count. That's what you've done from the Kabbalah and from the Zohar. That's where it's from. That's where it's written. That's where the white witches get their power from. That's how the white witches perfect their character. They don't look forward to the power of God's Holy Spirit entering them and telling them what to speak and how to speak. No, they go into the Kabbalah and the Zohar in order to improve themselves so they can reach a higher degree. God commands you not to learn the ways that are outside of his Bible. Well, today we're going to give you more information. And it looks like since some of you just refuse to repent, we're going to have to start over with 101 level and give you the milk of obedience. So we've got 200 scriptures here on obedience. Do you think you'll get the message? Or are you going to listen to lying ministers who say it's fine to add a Cifero count with its 22 paths. There are 22 paths within the 10 Cifero's. And you've got 10, and then you've got 22, and you end up with 32, which is like a 33rd degree Mason of perfection. And you can't say that it's not satanic because the tarot system, T-A-R-O-C-O-T, tarot system, is based on the Sifrot and all the cards of good and evil and balancing it all out is all based on the Sifrot. It's satanic. And worse than that, it was written by the devil. It was written by the devil because it was done by automatic writing. Automatic writing through the phony rabbis. And you've added it to your spiritual life. And if you say you haven't, you're a liar. You're worse than the Mormons. Because the Mormons at least admit the Book of Mormon is more powerful or as important as the Bible. But no, you, Dank and Brink, lie and you cover it up and you say, oh, we're not practicing the Sifferot. We're not adding it to the Bible. Then why are you doing it every day? You're supposed to have a spiritual Christian life. Why are you doing something that's in the Zohar, in the Kabbalah every day? And then you lie. You lie about it and say you're not adding it. You're not adding it. Well, it's either one or the other. You're, if you're doing it, you're adding it. If you're doing it, you're adding it. Period. Stop your lying. And all of you who are practicing this count Anyone who practices a lie goes into the lake of fire. Revelation 22, verse 15. You practice it, you're going into the lake of fire. Because God said, do not add to his Bible anything. Not one jot, not one tittle shall be taken away nor added. And indeed, for you ministers out there, you who are leading the people astray. Revelation 21, 27. You should read it. It doesn't make sense to you, so let's read it to you on a 101 leaven. level of leaven. You know, it, it's just like making different gods for yourself. Because you're, you're actually participating in a satanic ritual. And if it's given by automatic writing, it's satanic. And it's a ritual of self-improvement that the witches use. 
when you are supposed to be using the Ten Commandments for self-improvement, and you should learn the Ninth Commandment. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not do the Cipro count and say that you're not adding to God's Bible. Mark 7, 7, in vain do men worship me teaching for doctrine, teaching a Cipro count. In vain you're doing it. So let's read it what it says in God's Bible for the ministers in Revelation 21, 27. You think you're going to enter the kingdom of God? Revelation 21, 27 says you won't. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. You're causing a lie on many fronts. You are causing many lies, Triumph Prophetic Ministries. You are causing the lie of having the Sabbath day on Friday in half the world. You're causing the lie of approving of Mother Goddess Day, of approving of Sky Father's Day, of approving of Turkey God Day. And indeed, you refuse to have New Moon Day that says in Ezekiel 46.3 clearly, Thou shalt worship on the Sabbath and the new moons. Could that be any clearer? You shall worship dot 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 on the new moons. And new moon day is tomorrow, so we're having a service, obviously, on what's going to be Savan 1 at the start. And today is ER Ziv 30 and in the Pentecost count, not the satanic Cipro count disguised under the name Omer count. Why don't you call it the Kabbalah count? Because that's where it comes from. Well, the true count, today is day 44. Today is day 44. That means we will have a Pentecost service on the 50th day, which will be Friday. So please mark that on your calendar. This next week is going to become a busy week spiritually because we've got three holy days. We've got New Moon Day on the 12th. We've got Pentecost on the 17th. And we have got Sivan 7, which is the Sabbath, on the 18th. Now this is a wonderful week because it gives you three days to draw closer to Father. And indeed, tomorrow we're going to be enumerating the characteristics of God and helping you to understand how to be more like God by emulating His characteristics and not to be disobeying him and saying that you are obeying because that makes you a liar. And all liars will be tossed into the lake of fire. And indeed, for all the members that are following these lying ministers, Revelation 22.15 is for you because you're practicing a lie. But outside are dot, 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 who dot, dot, practices a lie. You're practicing the lie and supporting congregations that move God's Sabbath to Friday in half the world. You're supporting a minister who disfellowshipped in Australia, RF, the gentleman's name was RF, initials RF, you're supporting a minister that disfellowshipped a member for, from, for keeping God's Sabbath day. What an abomination to disfellowship someone for keeping God's Sabbath day. And you're going to support a minister like that? Give your head a shake. Then you have him adding you, getting you further down into the, on the road to hell by doing a Kabbalah count that the witches do in order to improve their character. And you've got your mind totally on yourself. Me, 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 I, 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 my, 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 me, me, me. And your characteristics, instead of focusing on Christ's sacrifice, 
that he gave his life for you, and instead of focusing on the power of God's Holy Spirit, and that's what you should be striving to strengthen the Holy Spirit in you through obedience to God, not through disobedience to God, and not through an analysis of your higher self. Look, Peter denied Christ three times. Peter didn't have the power to obey until the Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost. You've got to learn that your power comes from God and not from yourself. Your, your power comes from being like a little child and being teachable. Not from you doing some type of analyzation of your character and completely ignoring the fact that the Holy Spirit will teach you what to speak and cause you to speak the words in a balanced way that you can never achieve because you're going into the tribulation for deliberately disobeying God. Remember Saul. Saul kept the best animals to sacrifice to the Lord. And Samuel said, what's this bleeding of sheep I hear? What's this bleeding of the Cifero count that's not in the Bible? If it's not in the Bible, you don't do it. Period. Or else you end up with 4,000 different religions adding their Book of Mormon or adding their Kabbalah. That's what happens. So of course you don't add anything to God's Bible because God knew how to inspire it and give us the books that we needed in order to be in his kingdom. And indeed, we have the tools and all you have to do is have the correct attitude that you will obey what Father says. And when he says, do not add one jot, do not subtract, Deuteronomy 12, 32, and there are other scriptures, there's a pile of them, you can go to Galatians 1, 6, Galatians 1, 9, where you get a double curse on you for preaching something that wasn't preached in the first century, for preaching a gospel of a Kabbalah account that never was in God's Bible and was never in the first century Christians. Let's correct that to Netzerim. Because the Christians weren't known as Christians. The Netzerim was what Paul was. Paul, Yeshua, and Yeshua preached in the synagogues. And the synagogue that Yeshua was preaching in, one of the fishermen owned a pickle and fishing business and supported that yeshiva, that school, that teaching where Yeshua taught at. And that's where the Natserim came from. And if you want to know what the true believers are of the first century, the little flock that Yeshua speaks of, it's the Natserim. And we're not trying to do anything to save you because we realize that you've got to go into the tribulation and that you refuse to repent. Therefore, we don't worry about what the outcome's going to be. We let God worry about that and we preach the truth. And indeed, it's to a very select group that we're preaching the truth. You know that Elijah only went to one widow and stayed at that widow's house and taught, obviously taught that widow, communicated. They couldn't be just sitting there silent for years. So out of all of the widows in Israel, Elijah only went to one. So we're not worried about it. In fact, there's a deep parallel there with one of our members that I am in frequent contact with Ozelia Welling. And since she is, I guess you would say, 
single now because her husband had divorced her, and that makes her just the same as a widow. So that's what Elisha did. He went to one. Doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Because that's how things are here. Oh, yes, we have the Church of 200 in Pakistan, and we communicate with them on a monthly basis. But we communicate on a weekly basis with the widow, just like Elisha did. So we're not concerned about the houses of Israel. We're doing a warning message that all you disobedient virgins, you five foolish virgins of all of you of the offshoot churches of God are going to be cast into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth because you're having your opportunity now to know God and you are refusing it because you're following your lying ministers. Your ministers, if they don't speak according to this Bible, they are wolves. And I told you before, it's not the members who are wolves, it's the ministers who are the wolves, who are devouring the flock. We want the best for you, but you're going to have to realize that if you're taking away book words of the Bible and discounting them and not doing the commandments of God, where in the Torah God says, do not add, do not subtract. Well, Revelation 22:14 at the end of the book, it says, blessed are those who do his commandments. Your commandment is do not add. Is that so difficult to understand? Do not add. Think on that. Do not add. That's where the problem starts. Now, how can you say you're not polluted? The Zohar, Kabbalah, was written by automatic writing. That's testified to by many rabbis. And you are polluted. You've gone after the Kabbalah. You've broken loose in your ways. You go after, indeed, you go after alien ways. Well, you're backsliders, and your backsliding will be rebuked, you five foolish virgins, and you've forsaken the way of the Lord. You've started using the traditions of men in a Sephiroth count. You're going to have your crown taken away from you, if it's not taken away from you already, because over the last, hmm, well, since looking on the calendar, since April Passover, we've been telling you not to participate in these satanic counts, that you're supposed to study the Ten Commandments and learn and examine your life to see if you're lying. If you're lying, if you're a liar, then you know you're going to be going into the hellfire. You've got that as a Ninth Commandment. Hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, the fourth commandment, you're moving it to Friday in half the world. Why don't you study the commandments? Honestly, why don't you study the commandments? If it says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, why don't you follow it in all of the world? And if you've got the audacity to say that I'm going to wait for Christ to restore all things. You are a fool in the strictest sense of the word because you are disobeying God's Bible and giving an excuse why you're going to continue and indeed continue to neglect and refuse to obey God's Bible. You know, the, the stocks were for fools, where you could put the fool in a stock and, you know, throw tomatoes at the minister. Yeah, put him in a stock, throw tomatoes at him. He's a fool. He doesn't follow the words of the book, of the manual. You've got a manual and you're supposed to follow it. 
Well, pray that God gives you the courage, if you're a member of one of these lying ministers, that God gives you the courage and he delivers you out of the claws of these lying ministers. And any of your secret sins will be revealed. Judgment is now on the house of the Lord. I'm not going to pull up all these scriptures because we continually keep running out of time. I want you to realize that if you go to the back, we just went to the back of Revelations and see the end of the matter, where if you practice a lie, you'll be thrown into the lake of fire. And if you spout a lie, get others to follow it, like a phony Cifero count, and then have the audacity to say that you shall not, be th that you're not, the audacity to say that you're not adding it to the Bible, just like the Book of Mormon, the Book of Kabbalah is being added to the Bible by Triumph Prophetic Ministries, by Dan, Dan, disobedient Dan, Dan's kin, K-I-N, Dan, kin, disobedient. Go to the back of the Old Testament, it ends in a curse, with the word curse. And a lot of the people just concentrate on turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers. Well, why don't you read verse 4? Remember the law of Moses. Remember Deuteronomy 12.32. Do not add anything to God's Bible manual. So put it together in Malachi 4 verse 4. It's remember the law of Moses. Dot, dot, dot. End of verse 6, the last words of the Old Testament, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So you'd better remember the law of Moses. For God the Lord changes not. You read that in Malachi 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. And for all you new listeners out there, there's more law. There's more law. Not less law. Yeshua didn't nail the law to the tree. He nailed a list of charges. Just he nailed your speeding ticket to the tree. And if you keep on willfully speeding, breaking God's law for the rest of your life, there's no more sacrifice for sins. Hebrews 10.26 And indeed, you're consumed. You're consumed. Because you've gone away from God's ordinances and you haven't kept them. You have not kept them. Well, there's new moon day coming up tomorrow. Are you going to follow it? Are you going to tune in tomorrow? Oh, you'll have your turkey god day, but you'll refuse to have new moon day. You get the chance tomorrow, same time, same place. We want the best for you. But unfortunately, we have to wear black because you are going to have your heads cut off. So some of my friends are going to have their heads cut off. The people that are celebrating a Cifero count are going to have their heads cut off because they're adding to the Bible. And if you're preaching a Cifero count, which was not in the first century, because it was rewritten and written and written and rewritten it, Ten centuries later, after Yeshua, you want to be one of God's, therefore you shall keep his statutes and judgments. And indeed, you will live. You see, it isn't, um, isn't that difficult. All you've got to do is everyone obey your manual. Everyone obey your Bible every jot of it. That's all you've got to do. It isn't difficult. In fact, it's a blessing tomorrow to have the day off and worship Father on New Moon Day. It's going to be a blessing on Friday to have Pentecost, a double Sabbath coming up with Pentecost on the 17th and the Sabbath on the 18th. 
but it would be a wonderful week to draw closer to God. But you, you're not going, going to have your new moon day in worship of God, so you're going to be naked. You're not going to be clothed, clothed in any righteous garments. You're going to be naked before God. Well, we're going to shut up, shut off the yapping mouths of the ministers and just have you look at the facts of the matter. And the sword of the spirit is not meant to be namby-pamby with these ministers that are leading you straight into hell. The sword of the spirit is to be, be taking God's word and to stab the minister, cut the minister, slice and dice the minister, <laughs> for the liar that he is, until he repents. Now you just took God's Passover and you're all sinning by taking a Cifero count that is being added to God's manual. God's Bible is a manual. This is a manual. This is your manual. You don't start putting pages into it and adding to your manual. Or you're accursed. Self-willed ministers, liars, preventing you from entering the kingdom and causing you to disobey God's Bible. Causing you to disobey God's Bible. Now, right at the beginning, if you want to live, Deuteronomy 4, 1, And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live. But what does your minister say? No, he says, no, no, you can add to the Bible, you can add anything you want. Yeah, you can add a Sifrod count to, the, to your manual. Well, what happened with Samuel and Saul? First Samuel fifteen twenty-two. God had said, kill all the animals, kill all the pagan days, Kill all of the pagan ways, kill all of the pagan days. Kill all of Satan's ways, kill all of Satan's days. And in 1 Samuel 15, 22, and Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold! And when he says behold, he's saying, Hey there! Hey, it is better to obey than sacrifice. Did you get that? He said, hey there, to obey is better than to sacrifice. To obey, Deuteronomy 12, 32, do not add. And I keep hammering that scripture because it's so clear. It says, do not add anything. Could that be any clearer? And you're going to add a Cifero count, and then you're going to lie about it and say you're not adding a Cifero count. That's like the Mormons having the Book of Mormon, and they're more honest than you because they acknowledge the Book of Mormon as a separate, as a separate issue. But no, you're a liar. And you say, oh, I'm doing a Cifero count, but I'm not adding it to God's holy manual. Well, it's not in God's manual. So if it's not in God's manual, you are adding it. And it's in a separate book called the Kabbalah. You're adding it. Well, if you love God, you'll keep the commandments. And you know the scripture, he says that he loves me and keepeth not the commandments is a liar. I'll we'll give you more information on that because we don't want you to be sacrificed in the tribulation, which you're going to be. You're going to be because you're so disobedient. I think now we will open with prayer because it's important. You know, I've been given these dissertations at the beginning because I don't want to give them as strongly afterward, after the prayer, because 
we're inviting Father into services with our opening prayer. And it's going to look even worse for you with Father being asked to participate in this service and to bless and inspire the words of the service and then having the service about all of your disobedience. So out of mercy for you, I am delaying the opening prayer and have indeed delayed the opening prayer now. So all please rise. Face the north heavens where Father and Yeshua are, way past the Pleiades, arms raised in humble obedience, subservience, and in praise, arms raised in praise, head bowed, eyes closed. Almighty and most merciful Father, you who know the end from the beginning, you said in Revelations that anyone who practices a lie will be thrown into the lake of fire. Help us to have the people repent. Help us to preach in a way that they can realize that when you say do not add, it stops right there, do not add. Father, all of this is in your hands. Thank you for raising up the obedient Church of God, the Romans 9.28 work. Thank you for the 200 plus congregation in Pakistan because that was a test that we could teach them to wait for the sun to set for the Sabbath day. It all makes perfect sense why we were given that congregation. Please protect them. They're living in a very dangerous area, but they are a witness to the truth of your Sabbath day every week and indeed of Pentecost which they will be celebrating one day later than we are because they wait for the sun to set. Well now, Father, we ask you to inspire the services, both the hearing and the speaking, and please inspire the videotapes because that's when the hearing on the videotapes, because that's when most people are listening. And these videotapes are being archived to go out throughout the world when the advertising dollars come in so that we can do your work as the Romans 9.28 short work, Father. So now, we ask your blessing on this service, both the speaking and the hearing. And we ask also for your special mercy on our fellow associates who can only be saved if you give them more time, it looks like, to repent in. But thy will be done. You know what's best. That's why you have the tribulation. So now, Father, we turn this all over to your hands and ask it all in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy righteous name, our king and our warrior, king who will slay 200 million people at his arrival. In his name we pray. Amen. Yeah, little Jesus, meek and mild. Yeah, people be pretty surprised when little baby Jesus, meek and mild, kills 200 million so that the blood flows as high as a horse's bridle. And you think we might be just being a little too hard, a little too tough on these ministers? We just might be getting a little too tough. I'll show you how tough we're going to be. Just watch us. You'll see that. You'll see how tough we're going to be. Just watch us. And indeed, we're doing it because we are doing it for Father. They're breaking God's law, and they're never going to stop unless someone tells them, and that Father puts them into the tribulation. And indeed, they're going to have to die with their head cut off. And it's in incidental, you know, you could die if you cut off your legs. Why your head? Hmm. Well, people with a head, that's the tool you use for thinking. Yeah, you could bleed to death if you had your legs cut off. That would work. But no. You have your head cut off. We want you to realize how serious this is. 
how serious you're breaking God's law is. That you are sinning deliberately and you just came out of Passover. And worse than that, others have come out of Easter, Ishtar, and taken the wine and the sacrament of the bread. And they indeed also are all disobeying God's Bible. So we're trying to help you to realize that you cannot follow what your ministers say. You are responsible. You are responsible and you cannot say that I was only following orders or, or that it isn't your fault. We got a folder here with 200 scriptures on obedience that we're going to go through today, all in their correct terms, so that some members can get the idea through their thick, thick heads that they have to obey God's. Deuteronomy 12.32, and not add anything. And that's where it starts. It starts right there, not to add anything. No matter what your lying ministers, what your lying rabbis have to say. Because they're lying when they say that they're going to add the Sifro count to God's Bible. And all liars will be in the lake that burneth with fire. You can forget the Sifro count. You've got to worry about sinning. 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 Breaking the ninth commandment. Lying that you're not adding anything to God's manual. When you are adding a Sifro count as a practice in your congregations. You know, you... Those ministers forget about purity and they just go on lying. And, oh sure, they have half the oil. That's how they fool you. But then, you try to give them more oil and they rebel. They rebel and they disfellowship members and they mock members. Well, you know, we've, we've got <laughs> we've got ministers that are going against the obedient church of God. And get this straight. God's obedient church of God, just like the name says, obedience, is obedient to every jot and tittle, everything that we find including New Moon Day that we've reinstated and reestablished as God states in Ezekiel 46.3. But then you have these other ministers that like to take God's lily white Church of God, that's us. You want to find the Church of God? Follow the letters to Church of God, T-O, Church of God, the obedient, space, Church of God. But God's lily-white Church of God is crushed under the heel of the satanic lying Dankenbrink who says we are the disobedient Church of God. Crushed under his heel. Well, we know how to, how to fight back. We're going to tell you, Dankenbrink, you're the devil's hawk that you're putting your beak into God's sparrow to try to tear the obedient Church of God apart. You're the devil's hawk putting your beak into God's sparrow. And indeed, Dankenbrink, you're the eagle that's ready to put your talons into God's dove, the obedient Church of God. You're the eagle that's trying to put your talons, T-A-L-O-N-S, into God's dove, the obedient church of God. And Dankenbrink, you're the fat lobo wolf 
ready to kill God's sheep like RF in Australia. You're the fat lobo wolf ready to kill God's sheep. And Dankenbrink, you're the fat wild boar ready to tear up the obedient church of God with your tusks. Dankenbrink, the wild boar ready to tear up the flanks of God's noble stag, the obedient church of God. You know, Duncan Brink's cutting off the heads of God's lambs, like myself, Lawrence Noel, disfellowshipped for not keeping Turkey God Day, RF, head cut off for keeping the Sabbath on the seventh day, courtesy of Duncan Brink. Dankenbrink, who commands God's Sabbath to be held on Friday in half of the world. That's right. He wouldn't have disfellowshipped Ralph R. Ford. Hmm. Well, all liars shall be in the lake of fire. And Dankenbrink's lying lips are an abomination to God. And therefore, there'll be a payday in hellfire for all liars. Be they ministers, be they world leaders, be they presidents, they'll all burn in hellfire for being liars. They will be judged by God. Anyone who causes or practices a lie will be in the lake of fire. And you must give an account to God for all the deeds done in the body. Dank and bring, including your judgment will be more strict because you're a minister and you'll have to give account to God for why you disfellowshipped RF, why you disfellowshipped Lawrence Noel. You'll have to account to God for that. You'll have to give an account. You know, it's better that a millstone be placed around an evil minister's neck for disfellowshipping someone for keeping God's holy Sabbath day in Australia. And if you try to tell lying Dankenbrink anything, he'll just find a way to wiggle out of it and squirm it, and he, he won't he'll just slither around it and he'll bash the messenger. He won't discuss the facts. He will not discuss the facts that Mother Goddess Day is 4,000 years old, Sky Father's Day is 4,000 years old, Turkey God Day is 4,000 years old, Moving God Sabbath Day to Friday since 1883 is a sin, just like the Pope moves God's Sabbath day to Sunday. Oh yeah, Dankenbring will rail against the Pope, the Catholic Church, moving God's Sabbath day to Sunday. And then Dankenbring will move God's Sabbath day to Friday in half the world. Give your head a shake. He, you know, lying, lying is a real serious offense. And mocking God's obedient Church of God, calling it the disobedient Church of God. Let me tell you, the Bible says, He that rolleth a stone, it shall return upon him. You can look these scriptures up for yourself. He that diggeth a pit shall fall therein. He that soweth the wind of his big Dan mouth of Dan kin shall reap the whirlwind, and he's reaping it right now. He's an ox to the slaughter, a fool to the correction of the stocks. And Duncan brings failure to follow God's Bible, along with all of the other offshoot churches of God, including John Brisby, who follows a phony averaging calendar, and moves God's Sabbath days two days early, one day late, one day late, two days early. And the members are looking at the full moon on, on the 15th and wondering why the services started two days earlier. Had that happened to me at one feast where all the members are saying it on the second day of the feast, what a beautiful full moon it is. I said, I just about knocked them off their chairs by what I said. I says, yeah, the feast starts tomorrow. 
That's why the moon is full tonight. What, 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 do, you, what, do, you, what do you mean? What, 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 we mean started two days ago. I said, well, you shouldn't have. You're using a phony averaging calendar that's moving the days two days early, one day late, one day late, two days early. That means you're working on God's holy feast days. Well, people can refuse to obey, but that doesn't change the judgment day when all of the churches of God, all of them, will be judged as disobedient brats and will have to answer to God for their lies and be thrown in the lake of fire for lying. On Judgment Day, all these ministers will have to give account to God for all of their deeds, all of their deeds, the things that they have actually done, which we've humbly enumerated. You can't evade God's laws without impunity. You can't move God's Sabbath to Friday in half the world without impunity, without being called on it, and without being thrown in the lake of fire like the false prophet and the beast will be causing all of the abominations of the world you know lying to God saying that you're going to follow him at Passover and taking the elements and then going straight into a satanic added Kabbalah Sifero count is an abomination and you're refusing to yield to God's laws. To God's laws. Well, I've got a poem for you, all of you disobedient ministers. And the point of the poem is that the repayment for the sins is one that you cannot pay. Only Yeshua can. And if you refuse to repent, then for your one sin or your many sins, you have made the worst deal of your life. Here's the poem. It's called The Debt by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. This is the debt I pay for just one riotous day. As we'll say, one riotous sin of moving the Sabbath day to Friday in half the world. Years of regret and grief, sorrow without relief, pay it I will to the end. Until the grave, my friend, gives me a true release, gives me the clasp of peace. Slight was the thing I bought, small was the debt I thought. Poor was the loan at best, God, but the interest, the interest for the sin of one foolish mistake. This is the debt I pay for just one riotous day, years of grief and regret, of regret and grief, sorrow without relief. Pay it, I will, to the end. Salah. Think on that. All you lying ministers forcing people to disobey their Bible, trying to crush God's lily white church under your heel with your talons ready to tear apart the obedient church of God, you hawks trying to put your beak into God's sparrow, you lobo wolves trying to kill the obedient church of God, and you wild boars ready to tear up the obedient church of God with your tusks. Well, the devil's inspiring these ministers with their lying lips and their abominations. You know, it's not easy. Here comes a bear note for you. And when I say bear note, they're always salient and very, very powerful. Powerful to the point of inspiring repentance in some people. 
Let's turn to Matthew 11, verse 12. This applies to you in a positive way. The classical translation of Matthew 11, verse 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Now we're going to explain the Greek verb, which is translated suffered violence, and it's not a correct translation. There's a new rediscovered truth for you. Bear it out! Bear it out! Rediscovered truth. The word you want that to translate the Greek verb, which is baizo, B-I-A-Z-O, and they're using it suffers violence, is wrong. It means forcefully advancing forcefully advancing. Indeed, it means breaking forth, breaking forth. To make it easier for you, I'll go to the ending and I'll retranslate it for you the way it should have been translated so that you can understand that while we're talking about the breaking, the breaking away. So let's read it the way, get your pen out, tiniest pen you've got, and write, put in the words above, suffers violence. So here's the words you want to put in, and I'll stop where you're supposed to put them in. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, get your pen going now, has been advancing, slash breaking forth not suffers violence, has been advancing, forward slash, breaking forth. And the, get your pen going again, forceful people take hold of its every jot and tittle. The forceful people take hold of it. That's what Matthew 11:12 says. And this is important for you to understand that you have got to fight against your lying ministers and any other member that lies to you or tries to get you to follow a lying minister, you have got to forcefully take hold of the truth. Take hold of every word of your Bible manual by force. So, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been advancing, breaking forth, and the forceful people take hold of it, of its every jot and tittle, its every letter, in a fight, in a fight against a storm of opposition from the ministers from the wolves. Remember I tell you the wolves are the ministers that they're devouring you. It's a fight that you're gonna have a storm of opposition from the ministers. You tell one minister that you have to <laughs> have God's Sabbath day on the seventh day and he starts a big fight with you. Well, you've got these ministers who tell you to disobey God's Bible. So who do you have to fight against? You don't have to fight a man in the street. You don't have to fight Joe Blow down the street. You don't have to fight the guy at the supermarket. You have to fight your minister. You have to fight your lying minister. And you've got to forcefully do it. You've got to take it by force. And there's more than one minister I've fought with. Way back in the 80s, I was fighting with a Seventh-day Adventist minister in order for me to enter the Worldwide Church of God. And it ended up, after six months of fighting with this minister from the Seventh Day, and he was one of the big ones. And I was associated... Well, I'm not getting into that. The point is, I fought in the 1980s with the Seventh-day Adventists 
for all of the truth. Oh yes, I kept the seventh day, but I didn't keep Easter, Christmas, or their ideas of, we're well, not getting into all their beliefs. Then after that, I had to leave the Worldwide Church of God because they were completely off the rails going into paganism, back into paganism. So I had to fight with the worldwide ministers. Then I had to fight with the United Church of God ministers because I went into the United Church of God and then I had to fight with them because they weren't keeping God's ways. Then I went to the Church of God the Eternal and had a fight with that minister because he refused to have the Sabbath day, the holy days, by the crescent moon. Then I went to Triumph Prophetic Ministries and had a fight with that minister for his keeping the satanic Turkey God Day and indeed moving the Sabbath day to Friday and half the world and having Mother Goddess Day and having Sky Father's Day. So who did I have to fight? I didn't have to fight the guy on the street corner. I had to fight the minister. And that's how the violent, forceful people take hold of the kingdom since the days of John the Baptist by fighting your ministers. And all you've got to do is look at your Bible, and if your minister is not in accord with every jot of the Bible, you fight him. Because you are dealing with your eternal life. You are dealing with your eternal life. So now that you know the translation is the kingdom of heaven has been advancing, breaking forth, and the forceful people take hold of it, now we can tell you more about the verb where it says suffers violence and it is appropriate, it's more appropriate that it says advancing, breaking forth because the active meaning correctly conveys both the force, the force associated with the verb and also mentions the progressive movement of the divine reign where it says has been advancing that's the progressive movement of the divine reign where all things are going to be restored and indeed Elisha shall restore all things now the active meaning conveys both the force associated with the verb and also mentions the progressive movement of the divine reign. Now the other word, the Hebrew verb paratz, P-A-R-A-T-Z, means to break forth and was translated from the Greek verb Biazo, B-I-A-Z-O, in the Septuagint. The idea conveyed by the Greek verb, Biazo, certainly includes the action of breaking forth. Likewise, the single word, B-I-A-S-T-A-I, -A, -A, a noun derived from the same Greek verb, is translated the violent in the King James, but it's also translated the forceful man, the forceful man. I think that gives you a background look that what I am saying is true. That the forceful people take hold of it in opposition, in a storm of opposition, in a fight against their ministers who are opposite from the Bible and want to keep their own transition. Now it goes even deeper than that. We have, have the words of Matthew, when I've given you the Greek on that and some of the Hebrew. But there's a similarity here in my notes here of Yeshua saying and 
the prophecies of Micah. In Micah 2, verse 13, we have two entities being referred to. The one called the Breaker, B-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E and the King. Now the imagery, in the notes here I'm reading, the imagery pro portrayed in the passage calls to mind a pen full of sheep. A pen full of sheep. Here's the point. In ancient Israel, shepherds often created temporary holding pens for their flock. They might use stones or other materials to form a pen, or they might adapt an already existing natural barrier such as a cave in a rocky hillside and seal off the entrance. Now, after being restricted all night long, the sheep are eager to get free in the morning. Now, the shepherd will then break down a section of the makeshift enclosure, allowing the sheep to escape. And anxious to be free, the sheep will rush out as quickly as possible, usually knocking more of the temporary pen down. See, this is what's happening with God. God has put you into different denominations. He hasn't given you all of the truth until you get so frustrated with these denominations you first came in and they didn't have all of the truth and then you learned more of the truth on your own you became frustrated with them and you like the sheep had to break out you had to take it forcefully take hold of the kingdom by force now the breaker is also part of the reference to Elijah Elijah, that is to prepare the way before the Lord, is the breaker described in this prophecy by Micah. Here's the point. As the antitypical breaker spoken of by Micah, John the Baptist heralded the first coming of the Messiah and the initial breaking forth of the kingdom of God's so John the Baptist heralded the initial breaking forth of the kingdom of God, announcing God's Yeshua arriving, preparing the way for Yeshua. His efforts, John the Baptist's efforts, will be repeated by the end time Elisha, who will lead the breaking forth again before the second coming of the Messiah. Here's the point. John the Baptist led the breaking out, the breaking forth of the kingdom before Yeshua arrived the first time. Now Elisha will lead the breaking forth before the second time of the Messiah. Now that is a vital key for the scripture of Matthew eleven twelve, And that is you have to forcibly break out of your pen. Remember the pen that I'm talking about here. In Micah 2.13, we have two entities. Remember I said one called the breaker and the king. And the imagery portrayed is a pen full of sheep. And you've got to get so fed up with your minister's lies that you have to break out that you have to break out of that organization and indeed come into the obedient church of God. And if you find anything in God's Bible that we are not obedient to, tell us and we will change. You show us anything in the Bible that we don't already know, we'll be happy to change and we'll do it right away. We won't have any big deliberations for years or drag our feet, we will help you to forcefully take the kingdom. I've got a whole other sermon on Elisha, but we're, it's not the time for us to get into Elisha. We just want to say that we are going to show you how to have 
obedience towards God and how you're expected to have obedience towards God. And if you don't have obedience toward God, you're going to have to ask him to give you obedience, to change your heart. Because it doesn't matter if you just try and do it without changing your heart. It's got to come from the heart. Then it's just being done by rote. It's just being done by rote. So you want to pray for the Lord to teach you that you may know. You want to pray that unless the Lord shall build the house, which is every jot of the Bible and nothing out of a Kabbalah or a Zohar. And you want to tell Father you love his Deuteronomy 12.32 law. Do not add anything. So here's your opportunity right now. I'm tying it together. So all please rise. We're going to sing these hymns so that you can have it meaningful to you and not just sing it at the beginning of the service as a um, mm, tradition. No. I want you to sing now after all we've told you and about the sheep breaking out and how you have to take the kingdom by force and how you can only follow what's in the Bible. I want you to sing to Father unless the Lord shall build the house. And that will reinforce in you the truth that it can only be what is in the Bible that has been put there for the Lord to build the house. So indeed, please all sing out. Don't just listen. All sing out unless the Lord shall build the house. Unless you're one of the disobedient sheep, then don't sing out if you're one of the disobedient sheep. Just sit there and say, oh, we'll follow whatever we want to follow. We'll add whatever we want to add. We won't follow unless the Lord shall build the house. No, we scratch that out of our Bibles. Yeah. So please, here's your chance to reinculcate this into your mind that it's only what's in the Bible. Only, only, only what's in the Bible that you do. No matter how good you think it is to sacrifice other animals, you only do what is in God's Bible. All together. Unless the Lord shall build the house, the weary builders toil in vain. Unless the Lord loves his shields, the guys maintain a useless watch. In vain you rise ere morning break, and raise your eyes in vigil's keep, and bread of anxious cares We're stopping it right there. Boldly face their enemies. That is what we want you to do. Boldly face your ministers and fight and take the kingdom violently by force because you are commanded to. And you can see that God's people take it by force. Matthew eleven, twelve, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been advancing, breaking forth, and the forceful people take hold of it. And that man indeed is blessed who fears the Lord and lives and walks in all his ways. 
That's important for you to realize. And you just sang, Happy they whose quivers bear full store of arrows such as these. Those are the blessings he commands. And that's your vigil. You keep your vigils, you keep your holy days, and you follow every jot of Yeshua. So let's move on to Lord, teach me that I may know. So you're going to ask Father to teach you. Because obviously you don't know how to follow the Bible or else you wouldn't be following the Bible. And if you say you're following the Bible and you are doing a Sifarot count, you are a liar. If you say you're following the Bible and you're not following Ezekiel 46.3, you shall worship dot 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 on New Moon Day. You're a liar. Why not repent? If you're following all of the pagan days, Mother Goddess, Turkey God, Sky Father's Day, why wouldn't you want to celebrate New Moon Day tomorrow? It's too busy. You'd rather have the other days than God's Day. Interesting. Salah. Think on that. Indeed. Think on Lord, teach me that I may know. So let's petition Father that he teach you that you may know of what to do. All together. servant also. You just pray, Lord, teach me that I may know. So you have faith, you have confidence in answered prayer. Therefore, oh, how I love you, Deuteronomy 12.32, not to add one jot or tittle. Oh, how I love I thy law. You want to tell Father that. Very important. So reflect on what you're going to sing now. How, how I love I thy law. Or else you can say, oh, how I hate your Deuteronomy 12.32. It is never in me. I will never obey Deuteronomy 12.32 because I'm a thankless, pig-headed minister. And I refuse to obey Deuteronomy 12.32. Do not add. Oh. Salah. Think on that.
Yes, indeed. From thy words in the Bible, let me never, ever depart. That is what you want to say to Father. That's what you want to vow to Father. And indeed, you've repented on Passover, and you renewed your vows, and you accepted his gift for of salvation standing in your place for the sins that you unknowingly committed or sins where you slipped and fell. Now, the job of the obedient church of God is to put out information that saves life, that saves lives, spiritual lives, godly information. Now devilly information takes li lives, takes lives. The Sifro gets you counting for 49 days on yourself instead of looking forward and realizing the power of God's Holy Spirit that enters you and causes you and tells you what you will speak. And God promises you that. So tr stop trying like the witches to increase your position. You don't do it that way, you follow the Ten Commandments. You follow and listen to whatever's in God's Bible. How do you enter the kingdom? Repent! Repent and believe! Those are the basic conditions. You know, there's two kinds of belief though. There's false works, and there's true works. And you've got to have the belief that is the true belief, not the false belief. Let's tell you more about repenting. To repent is to completely change the mind. To completely change the mind in respect to sin. Bear note, to repent is to completely change the mind in respect to sin. Now, sin is transgression of the law. Most people know that. First John 3, 4. They want to know what sin is? Sin is transgression of the law. law. But to repent, to repent, means to change your mind in respect to what sin is and fear God. Now what did, what did Jesus say to the young man who asked him how to inherit eternal life? And Yeshua said, if, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments, don't lie. Matthew 9, 17, keep the commandments. We hear a great deal of the gospel of men the gospel about a Cifero count, but it's not in the Bible. The point is, you've got to repent. And the way you need to repent is by you realizing that you have to change your mind about fearing sin and to start fearing sin. And that is how you have a Christian mind and that serum mind because you fear to disobey one jot or tittle of God's way of life. You fear to add anything to God's way of life. Do you want to obey God's Bible? Do you want to? Really, do you want to? If you want to, then you better start out by tomorrow, keeping New Moon Day. Ezekiel 46.3, you're supposed to worship on New Moon Day. That's an easy test for you. You can tell whether or not you're in the Word of God by just reading Ezekiel 46 tonight and then see what you do tomorrow. Yeah, pretty easy. Now, we're the branches of the tree. Remember, we gave you the sermon on the Netzerim. We're the branches. 
and you don't want to be grafted into any Kabbalah tree. You want to be grafted only into Yeshua's tree. And we will not go away. We're, the obedient church of God is not going to go away or disappear. We're going to keep calling these ministers exactly what they are. And we're going to keep on telling you what you need to do to repent. And we're going to sh indeed shut off the lying mouths of the ministers. You know, James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So we take that one scripture over and over again, because that stops everyone cold in their tracks. Do not add Deuteronomy 12.32. So you say you believe in the Pentateuch, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. You say you believe in it. If you believe in the first five books of the Bible, indeed all of the Bible, let's keep it just simple for those um, people who accent the Torah. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of Deuteronomy 12.32, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror and he looks at himself and goes away and forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres and fights and takes it forcibly and argues with his minister if the minister is not in line with the Bible, and every minister in the world except the obedient church of God is out of line with the Bible. We can prove that by the facts. Now we're happy to do this broadcast, and we're happy if you repent. And we're wearing black because we're sad for you because you are so disobedient and you're going into the lake of fire and you're certainly going into the tribulation of your head cut off. So will you be one who hears and then deceiving yourself and you go to the mirror and you look at yourself and then you go away and you forget what, you, what you're like, that you're disobedient. Now in Hebrews 11, verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world, and he became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. You've got to have the faith to believe every jot of God's Bible. You know, Proverbs take it down to a 101 level without getting into all the elements of faith, of a live faith and a dead faith. Let's just go to Proverbs 10, verse 8. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Now, the Bible translations use the word fool, and it's appropriate now, just a sidebar here, a bear note. What you shouldn't say about a person is that, and what the Bible forbids when you do study into it, it's not the word fool. It's calling a person a totally useless piece of dung, a useless energy. Yeah. Disparaging the person causing, saying words to the effect that uh, you're a piece of dung not worth stepping on. That's the true interpretation of that. So now we want you to believe what God's said. And you want to believe Deuteronomy 12.32? I'm going to hammer it till you get it. James 2.19 you know, you, basically James is saying, you believe, well, even the demons believe, and, but the demons shudder. 
James 2.19 says, You believe that God is one, you do well, even the demons believe and, you, and shudder. So, demons believe that there's two kinds of belief. True belief, and then belief without action. Now Peter had said to them to repent and be baptized. Acts 2.38, right at the 101 level. So repent comes in there. And you know that you need to repent if you're doing anything that's different from God's Bible. And in Revelation 22.7, I like going to the back of the book to see how it all ends up. And behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now, Ephesians 5.11, to take it up to a 201 level, Kabbalah and Zohar, which were written by automatic writing, which were written by demons, and many authorities state that. It isn't myself who's stating that. Ephesians 5.11, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Show them for what they are. That the Sifrod is taking them right out of the satanic Kabbalah based on the Zohar, which the satanic witches and warlocks, especially the white witches, use to reach a higher level. So you want to serve God in sincerity and truth. I'll just read off some scriptures so we don't run out of time here. Joshua 24, 14. Sincerity and faithfulness. Mark 16, 16. Whoever doesn't believe, when there's two types of belief, true belief and then the phony belief, will be condemned. And if you'd enter life, Matthew 19, verse 17, keep the commandments. And his statutes, Psalm 119, verse 48, you're supposed to meditate on them. And Proverbs 19, 16, whoever keeps the commandments keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. And God's ways are not to add a book of Mormon and not to add a book of Kabbalah. And where it says Deuteronomy 12.32, do not add. Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my path. It's important. Do you love Jesus? Question, do you love Jesus? John 14.23, if anyone loves me, they'll keep my word. Pretty easy. If you don't love Jesus, you won't keep Deuteronomy 12.32. Is it sinking in yet? You know, the promises to ancient Israel, if you were willing and obedient, Isaiah 1.19, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Question, bear note, do you want to be Yeshua's friend? John 15, 14. You are my friends if, 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 if you do what I command you. John 14, 21. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So here we have it. You start keeping the commandments, that Bible is going to mushroom in front of you. You're going to understand more and more and more. Because it says here, Yeshua says, he promises, he doesn't lie, that he'll manifest himself to that person. John 14, 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he, Yeshua, will manifest himself to them. You know, John 8, 32, 
you know the truth, the truth will set you free, set you free from that Sifferote count that has you totally focusing on yourself, going in circles of Jasad into Hod and Hod into Gavir and Jasad into Gavir and Hod into Jasad. Mark 7, 7, it's classic, you know, in vain you worship if you follow the doctrines of men. See, you've got to use your wisdom and you've got to use your talents. You can't just be sitting around and not fighting and not swimming upstream. You know the story of the tal talents. If you just keep your one talent, the kingdom will be taken away from you. You've got to do something. You've got to have action, Jackson. You've, you've got to fight violently to take the kingdom. If you just sit around with your one talent and sit on the information your minister has given you and not improve and check it against the God's Bible and his manual, if you just hold on to that one talent, you're doomed. You're just plain doomed. Now, you said at baptism that you'd make a vow to obey God and everything that's written in the Bible. And in Psalm 119, 106, I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. And that's what you did. You swore an oath and confirmed it at your baptism that you would keep God's ways. And Psalm 103, 18, to those who keep his covenant, Psalm 103, verse 18, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Hope you're getting the picture. I've got 200 of these and there isn't time to do all 200 of them, so I'm trying to pick out the highlights. All right, bear note, what's your duty? Here's a highlight. 1 Timothy 6.14. 1 Timothy 6.14 To keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's your job. And verse Thessalonians 1 verse 9 You've got to serve the true God. You've got to turn from the lying Kabbalah. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, which is written up in his manual, not in any satanic manual of witches and warlocks and of tarot counting, the same book that's used for tarot counting. Now watch out for Matthew 5.19. This is powerful. You should know this. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So if you relax any one of these commandments, you're in trouble. So don't think it's a light thing. Now, there are certain people who respond and there are certain people who don't. John 10, verse 27, says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You don't have much time left. You don't have much time left because John 9, verse 4 says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is still day. Night is coming when no one can work, and that's coming in the next few years. Be too late. You'll be in the tribulation. You'll have to give your head. And there's no fooling God that you, you know, can get out of the tribulation at the last second and go to the place of safety. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be of the right heart. 
and God will read your heart. And also remember that those who did not even know will be beaten. You'll find that in Luke. Those who did not know will be beaten. And worse than that, people, ministers that are disobedient and you keep company with them. Proverbs 28, 7, the one who keeps the law is a son with understanding, such as RF in Australia who keeps the Sabbath day on the seventh day, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. So all you that are sticking with being a companion to disobedient ministers, you're to, <laughs> you want to be a companion to de disobedient ministers? Well, you're shaming your father in heaven. Now, if you love God's testimonies. It says in Psalm 119, 167, My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. Psalm 119, verse 104, one of the greatest psalms in all of the Bible, one of the longest psalms. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your laws. Also, Psalm 119.8, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. So will, will you keep God's statutes? Or will you have God forsake you? It's not him who's forsaking you in those terms. It's your fault. It's your fault. Because you don't fear him. Just like Samuel had to have his, the pagan animals. 1 Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Fear, serve. It's easy. Those who weren't defiled, five virgins, Revelation 14, 4, haven't defiled yourself with false churches. <coughs> Women is an acronym for the church. Let's read it. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins, spiritual virgins, totally pure, totally white. It's these who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. Now, in Psalm 119, verse 67, some of you have had to go through pain or illnesses or some troubles. Rightly so, it says in Psalm 119, 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. So if you've gotten beaten up today by this sword that's behind my sh shoulder here, therefore, Read Psalm 119.67 to yourself before as I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. So the purpose of this, not to be mean, but to wake you up to keep the word. Psalm 18, verse 44. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners came cringing to me. See, the paths of the Lord, Psalm 25.10, are steadfast love and faithfulness, but not for everybody. It says, for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. So it's not for everybody. It says, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness, comma, for those who keep his covenant. Now you've got to have your heart faithful. It's very important. You've got to keep your promise that you promise to be righteous at baptism. Nehemiah 9, verse 8 you found his heart faithful before you, 
and made with them the covenant to give to his offspring the land of Cain, Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, the Girgashite, and all the sites, and you have kept your promise, for you are righteous. So if you've, you have a faithful heart towards God, God will keep his promises of salvation to you. If you do not have a faithful heart and try to carry on your own razzle-dazzle, sifferote way, just yapping with a ratchet jaw and not following the Bible, you are headed for destruction. See, so remember I told you that the minister is the bolt that into God's Word. The minister is supposed to be the bolt into God's Word. The minister should be bolted to God's Word. So, it's just like a chain of members. The minister bolts on to God's Word. The minister is fused and welded right into God's Word. That's the job of the minister, to be fused and welded right into God's word. And he pulls the chain of members. And the chain pulls the members to safety. But if the bolt is bad and breaks off of God's word, then the chain, the members don't reach their destination. Put this in your bare note so you can understand it. Your minister has to be bolted to God's Word. If he's not bolted to God's Word, you are lost because he's not pulling you to your destination because he's not bolted to God's Word. Now, God's Word states that wisdom comes from the Lord. Wisdom does not come from a satanic cipher count, period. You want wisdom? Then obey the Lord. Look at all the scriptures I've given you. Not a satanic Kabbalah Zohar that was written by the automatic demon writing. And these sanctimonious ministers want to do a satanic Kabbalistic Omer count from the satanic writings of the Zohar. They want you to walk around all day long giving the Omar count of Gavir and to Chesad and to Had and back and forth all 22 paths. God says you shall not add one jot to his Torah. Deuteronomy 12.32 again. If you want understanding and knowledge, obey, obey God and stop your vain traditions. Here's where your wisdom comes from. Proverbs 2, 6 to 8. Proverbs 2, verses 6 to 8. All wisdom comes from the Lord, and so does common sense and understanding. Look it up. It says the Contemporary English Version. Contemporary English Version. C-E-V. All wisdom comes from the Lord, and so does common sense and understanding. And indeed, verse 7, God gives helpful advice to everyone who obeys him, not to those who disobey him. Does that make sense? Does that drive it home? Wisdom comes from the Lord, not from you doing a Cifero count. So many notes here. You know, when Judgment Day comes, you've got to answer for all, all you've said. And if you're being called, you've got to take the kingdom by force. And forceful people take hold of it. <clears throat> they fight with their ministers in order 
to have the minister follow the Bible, and if the minister doesn't follow the Bible, they leave that denomination and go on to the next denomination until they find a denomination such as the Obedient Church of God, which in fact does follow the Bible, going by the facts of the matter. And if you don't repent, if you ministers don't repent, we told you the next step is we're going to mark you before God. And I've already marked one minister for disobeying God's Bible. And he was a good friend. So don't think that you won't be marked as a minister. And that minister was of the Church of God the Eternal. And right now, it's one step away from Triumph Prophetic Ministries' Dan Kinbring being marked. Because he's leading people straight into hell. Straight into hellfire. By disobeying God's Bible on so many points. Moving the Sabbath to Friday to doing a satanic Zohar count. So he's got to be marked. And that means that you have nothing to do with him. Because he's sinning. And he's sinning deliberately. Oh, did you want to obey God or don't you? You've got to learn to obey God. There's no other way. You've got to learn to repent. There isn't any other way. And you've got to humble yourself and submit to the Lord. He gives grace, more grace to the humble, but resists the proud. Those who actually do submit, he gives more grace to. He says, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Do you know what grace is? Grace is a limited period of time to repent in. Here's the point. He gives you more time to repent if you're a humble mind. That's the point. He gives you more time to repent if you're a humble mind. So be humble. Listen to what we've told you today so that you indeed can be given more time to repent in but I wouldn't I wouldn't push it if I were you because Acts 1730 in conclusion in the past God overlooked dot 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 ignorance but now he commands all people everywhere to repent Acts 1730 So think on that. Salah. In the past, God overlooked in ignorance. But now, New Testament, He commands all people everywhere to repent, repent, repent. Which means to get your life in line with God's every jot and tittle. And you have to do that. or be thrown in the lake of fire to put you out of your disobedient misery. So think how you are commanded to repent, Acts 17.30, and that's the sermon for today. We've got so many notes here, but we can only deal with what's important, because most of my ex-friends are all in different branches of the offshoots that just I don't want to see in the lake of fire. But we're going to be taking this broadcast to the world, so we're going to take it on a broader basis in the future. But since this is just part of the Pentecost count, we're going to hammer it home until Pentecost on Friday this week. So all of you know that uh, Thursday night starts Pentecost. And indeed, tomorrow is New Moon Day carrying on the Sabbath day. So we're going to have a busy week. But you won't hear anything more about the Sephirot after the 17th. So that's why we are giving you meat in due season. And now, let's all please rise. Blessed and happy is the man.
Give that praise to Father. Who does never walk astray? It all fits together. Sing out to Father that you believe what he says, that you'll be happy if you never walk astray. That's so important for you to believe, because he puts that in his Bible, that you will be happy. merciful Heavenly Father. We know that you have righteous anger. We know that you have a lake of hellfire prepared. We fear you. We fear to disobey you. We fear to add one jot to your Bible. It is complete as it is. We ask for you to lead the others to repentance. Help them to understand so that our friends do not have to die 